Uh, Alright, welcome back today. We're gonna look at post effects and a lot of you guys asked me how to do them because you saw this nice little nuke which I created. We are not going to do the nuke today, but I'm gonna show you how you can technically create the nuke. Basically from there on you know everything that you have to do, including the lighting effects and also the shake, which all can be super easily done within UFN. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. it Alright, and this is what we are going to create. You can see that we have a bunch of effects in this whole thing if we touch them all. Um, you can see that our screen shakes, we get some like nice vignette and also the screen darkens and you can get some cool other effects. All right, and here we are, a completely empty map with nothing on it. It's still the same project, but it is on a different level. So we can have new nice effects and they would not be disturbed by other effects that are already in the map. Um, so the first thing I guess we need is something that we can touch. Uh, so I guess we just add a normal cube. Obviously, that can be anything for you, whatever you want. And I think we also need a nice button for this one. So go to the devices tab here and look for a button. So we're gonna add the button here. This can be literally triggered by anything. You don't have to add a button. You can use whatever you want. If you have knowledge in Fortnite Creative, you can you know, activate this however you want. So we add a nice button here, which we are gonna use to activate this. But from here on, we start with the effect. And the first thing we need is actually a folder. So we can actually start, you know, having every, everything nice and organized, which is super important. So let's create a new folder, call this tutorial uh, or tuto uh, because we're lazy. And we're gonna add a little sequence in here. So we go to the um, right click on the thing, uh, go to cinematics and go to level sequence. Uh, this is usually used for camera work and all kinds of animations, but this is all purpose. We can use this for basically anything. So we're gonna call this effect um, and we're gonna click into it. We can save it quickly. And from here on, we're going to start adding the effects, but we can close this out because we don't need this yet. The first thing we want to do is add a nice post effect. We're not going to start with the shake. We start with some nice, you know, cool effects, I guess. Just normal effects that you would, uh, you know, consider being cool. Um, and we're going to start by clicking on this little cube icon here and adding the visual effect post process volume. This is our effects volume, which um, if you go in here, you can have the effects that you want. Thing is, you can also extend this to wherever you want. You can like, if you go to the settings here, you click on, or oh, you cannot see that because my camera's. So if you go on here and click on the post process volume, uh, you can see that you have a bunch of things here. Um, and if you open this up, you can see um, that you can scale this as much as you want. Um, but there's a cooler setting. If you go into the search bar here and you type infinite, or any, I guess, works as well. Um, you see the infinite extent unbound. We can tick that on and now the entire map is filled with this effect. Obviously, that depends on you, what you want to do with this effect, if you only want us to be affecting a small area or the entire map. In our case, the entire map is perfectly fine, which also means that we don't really need this. So you can put this wherever you want, um, but you will not see it in game anyways. So now we can delete this and we start our effects. In our case, we want to have a vignette, which kind of like gives us this nice little look of, um, you know, this focused uh, type of deal. So same thing again, we can click on our volume here or click it in uh, the uh, outliner and we look for the image effects. The image effects are under the lens and then you go to image effects, but you can add whatever effect you want. It depends on you, it's completely um, free. Feel free to be creative. Um, we're gonna check this mark here. And if we you know, make this up, you can see that our edges get a little bit like blurry or like get darkened a little bit. Um, but you can see this is only up to one. It doesn't really go like super dark and doesn't really give this super focus. There is a trick, but you can actually make this a lot stronger. Um, and we actually need to do it anyway. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into our content browser, open the um, sequence that we just created. So open it up and go to the plus icon over here. Go at at actor and we look for our post processing volume and now we have it in here but we cannot see any of the effects that are in here so how do we add these we click on the plus icon and we go to the settings and now we have to obviously remember what we clicked before so we went on lens image effects and vignette intensity so now you can see that we still have this one slider here but we can type in a number for example five and now you can see we have a bigger effect. I'm not sure if that is intended or Epic just forgot to lock it in that sense as well. Um, I would stick to one just in case, you know, Epic uh, you know, removes this at some point, but you can technically do it. So now what we want to have is obviously a sequence. When we touch this, we want to have this like flashing in or just like gradient, like slowly fading in and out. Um, so we create an animation basically with this um, effect here. 
Um, for that, we're gonna leave it obviously on zero on the first, gonna add this little like um, circle here, we're gonna add a keyframe, and we move forward to 0 0.5 and make this to a one. So now, so now you can see, so now you can see that we have this little effect here. If we play this, you can see like the edges are getting slowly faded in. Um, but we want to keep this effect for like another one second. So um, we're gonna click this again. Now we have it like stuck for one second. And if we go back to two seconds here, um, we can go back to zero. And now we have a nice fade in, fade out effect on this uh, vignette effect. Now there is a problem. If we close this, it first of all always safe. If we close this, we still have the effect. We don't want that effect always to be in here. That is kind of annoying. Um, and especially if you go in game, so if we quickly publish this, you can see that we still have, you can see that we have the effect on our character right now, which is obviously we do not want that every time. We only want it if we click that little button over here and activate it. So how do we remove this vignette now from our actual game and only have it when the sequence plays? So first things first, we're gonna go back into here and um, now see it's not here anymore um, because we obviously have the slider to zero. So how do we get it that it's always on zero basically? The thing we have to do here is add another effect which is a blend between the correct lighting that is in the map and the you know, lighting or the effects of the processing volume. For that we're gonna go into our processing volume and I'll show you another trick which you can use here as well. All right, so you can also just click on the volume here and in the um, processing volume settings, we can find the blend weight. And you can see so keyframe markers here, you can find them anywhere basically, wherever there's a setting that is allowed in these sequences. And if you click those, they will appear inside of your sequence. So you can see right here, we have nothing in here and now we click on the blend weight and we get a keyframe with the blend weight. So obviously the blend weight should be zero at the start because we don't want to have it yet. And then we can go forward. Um, we can perfectly sync it up with this one. Depending on the effects, you might want to adjust it for yourself. So put it to one now. So now you can see there's a nice blending in between. And um, we're gonna create one keyframe here, go to the end and put it to zero. And now we have a nice blending in between everything. It basically looks the same as before, but now if we save this, we do not have the effect. You can basically turn it back on if you want to, um, but this doesn't affect in the sequencer now. Um, so if you still have this effect for whatever reason, you can just turn it off here. Um, it will not affect anything, but if you go back into your sequence, you will still have the nice effect and it will go on and off. So for example, if we stay here, we quit out, um, nothing is happening. And now how do we edit actually that we click on this button and start the whole thing? We're gonna go back to our editor. We're gonna go to the devices tab here and we look for the cinematic sequence device. You can also type that in here, obviously, if you want to. We're just gonna drag it out and it might be in the floor. And here we are. This device will allow us to basically play these sequences in game and it will play it for the characters, not only in the cameras. So it is fully for the character. And um, yeah, all we have to do basically now is make sure that the sequence is in here. For that, we're gonna click on our cinematic sequencer and to make sure that the right sequence is in this tab right here. You can either drag it in. So if you, for example, go here, go to Tuto, and um, you can just uh, drag it in like this, or you can open it up and look for the sequence that you have. For the user options, we don't have to change anything from here on. You can obviously loop the playback, so basically loops all the time. You can restore it, autoplay, whatever you want. But in our case, we just need to add the play function here. So we're gonna click on the sort of plus icon, click the little um, you know, picker tool here, and we select our button. So our button will be the starting. So this one will activate this one and we'll basically start the whole thing. Uh, so we're gonna click on the button. Now you can see the button is in here. The button thankfully only has one option and it is uninteract, meaning that if we click on the button, it starts the sequence and plays the function. And now if we push our changes and if we start the game and if we interact with our little button here, you can see that we have this little nice effect and it fades out. We can press this like over and over again and it will continue afterwards. I'm quickly gonna show you guys one example, which is the shaker because the shaking is a little bit more complicated than anything else in uh, UFN, I guess, but it is still not hard at all. So, all right, so the first thing we wanna do is actually click in the empty space again, open it up, and then we open a blueprint class. Um, we're not gonna select the building proper meshes. We actually gonna look for the camera shake here. Um, and we do not want to have the uh, camera shake base. We want to have the camera shake actor. That's very important. It worked before if you just used the shake base, but now you can for some reason not put it in there anymore. Um, so we're gonna go with the direct way, I guess. 
I'm going to click on the actor here and select it. And now we can name it to shake. So and now if we click into it, this does look like in the Unreal Engine and we can now select the camera shake. Usually you can just put your camera shakes in here. For some reason it doesn't work anymore. Um, maybe it's bugged, but we can simply go here if we click on the plus icon here. But thankfully we can still work around it and we can click on the plus icon here. This opens up your folders and we're gonna click on our folder that we want to have. We're gonna name this obviously shaker and we're gonna save this. So now we have created with not too many options right now. Uh, we have now the camera shake base. Um, this one, you're gonna click on here and select one of these four options. Technically only two really work here. The sequencer doesn't work at all because something that is used for this is not in uh, UFN. So uh, we cannot use this, but you can use the pearl noise or the um, wave one. Uh, the other one is basically one that combines everything. Um, in our case, we're gonna use pearl and noise and we can start adjusting our shake. So you have four options here. Um, basically how hard you want to shake. Um, there is two main things that you want to look out for, the amplitude and the frequency. The amplitude is how big of a shake you have and the frequency is how fast these are shaking. So for example, if I put this to 10, I have very large shakes, but if I leave this to one on the frequency, these shakes will not be very fast. So it will be more like a, like a long sway of things. And if I you know, move this up, this will be more rapidly. Um, so I think you can play around with this depending on what you like for your shakes. Uh, you can, uh, you know, just as to your liking, you can even adjust the single axis here. Um, so if I, for example, want to go here and put everything to three, I think that's a fine number. Um, you can even add the rotation to it as well. By default, these are all to zero. Uh, we don't need that. Same thing for the FOV. By default to zero, you can add that if you really want to, but we don't need to. The timing is very important. I think our sequence goes two seconds long, uh, or three, I think, three seconds. And we have a timer of 0 0.5 on the end and on uh, the uh, beginning. So the blending time on the in and out is five seconds for us. So once you have all your settings done, everything looks fine, Gucci, you're gonna click on compile and you're gonna save it. And now you can go back to your shake actor and you have to adjust the inner radius a little bit. Uh, by default, this is very small and it will not be enough. Um, so we're gonna just crank it up to 20,000. So in this case, it's just for the entire map. If you want to have this for like a certain radius, do it as you like, um, but 100 and 1,000 is not enough for the entire map. Just telling you right now. And from here on, we don't need to change anything. Compile, save, and now we have to drag this actually into the map. So close these. Go to your um, camera shake here. You can see now you have the shaker and the shake. Drag the actor into the map and now you can see you have this little like shaky icon here, which we now can use in our sequence. We can go into our effects sequence here. I'm gonna add to the track, look for our shake. We have it right here. And as you can see, we can add here and add a camera shake, controlled or triggered. In our case, we want to have controlled. And you can already see that the shake is perfectly lined up here. Actually, it is not as long as I thought, but we can adjust it very easily here. So easy. Now we have the camera shake. It's not shaking if you just do it like this. You have to actually play the sequence correctly. You can see it shakes perfectly fine. And now we actually don't have to do anything. Save it up. And now as you can see, we start the game. And if we interact, everything is shaking and fades in, fades out. That is exactly what we want to create and you can obviously add as many effects as you want to to this. It is super easy to do. Uh, obviously you have to be a little bit creative, but that's it for me. Hopefully you learned something today. If you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys back in the next one. Bye.